Welcome back everyone. We were last seen hiking through Fianaran 2, where we were lucky enough to find one of our main target species, the Dumeril's boa, as well as a troop of ring-tailed lemurs. In today's episode, we'll make the long drive up north again towards Andasibe National Park, where we will be staying three full days to discover the incredible wildlife that calls that region home. What up, guys? Here we have a centipede found in our <laughs> hotel room. What's up, gamers? And it's not that small either. Let it be known. If you suffer from motion sickness, the road to Andasibe may not be for you. our way over to Andesibe and well we, we had to take a little pit stop if you know what I mean. Of course our chameleon guru Bill Strand happened to spot this beautiful chameleon here. This is the Fursifer Major. Now you may be thinking isn't this a lateralis or the carpet chameleon? Well at one point these animals were thought to be the same species but recently it was taxonomically classified so it's its own species now. One of the distinct features is that this one is a little a bit larger than the Fursifer lateralis. There is a little bit of a different coloring to the animals, but the distinct feature is that they are a bit larger. Yes, we'll get back to the vehicle and be on our way and let this little lady do her thing over here on the edge of the road. I'm sure she was probably basking and catching all the grasshoppers that are flying around in the wind. Awesome. Take a look at this beautiful assassin bug nymph. If I'm not mistaken, this is probably the same species we came across on our second day in Madagascar. The nymph appears to be around its penultimate molt, as you can see the swollen wing buds there on top of its body. After several more hours of driving, it was time to make a stop for a local lunch. The menu, as always, some delicious zebu. Hey, I got the crunch. You got the crunch? I can eat in peace now, without worrying about the crunch. So. But what was special about this lunch is we made a few sweet friends. All it took was sharing a little bit of our meal. We like Canadians. This is a long journey. We finally arrived in Ansira Bay where we'll be staying the night. Uh, we're just arrived at our hotel. Yeah, What's, what else is going on? A lot's going on inside. I agree that that's why it comes from the All right. So are these better or worse than the frites? At the place of the dogs. Good treat. Good treat. Good treat. Good treat. Bill rated them the best. That was the best zebu treats he's ever had. We ate a lot of zebu on this trip. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. How are you feeling? Pre coffee. Oh, the pre coffee. But man, it smells good in here, and I'm, they have coffee cups, so I assume that they have coffee. It's a good Tune in in an hour when I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed, but right now. <laughs> hmm. Very good, very good. Hey guys, how are we doing? Good morning is here. Did you sleep well, Alec? Mmm. Giddy snacks. Four of those. I'll try that. Seven of those. It's going to be a good breakfast. After delicious breakfast, it was back to the bus where we played more games and had some fun with local children and social media filters. Yes. Before leaving Ansirabe, we went to go look at something very interesting that wasn't reptile and amphibian related. This business specializes in selling and trading semi-precious stones and fossils. It was super interesting to learn about how many different types of mineral or stone can be found only in Madagascar and how some that are found here are different colors than in other parts of the world. The cherry on top 
They owned several radiated tortoises, so it was really cool to get to interact with these stunning endangered animals in their native Madagascar. It's a fossilized uh, wood, uh, and now it's turning into a uh, fossil island that is uh, stones now. Usually, we have a three different kinds of wood in Madagascar, which is uh, fossilized. Back on the road with at least four to five hours to go. The Madagascar Expedition is brought to you by Exoterra. Make your reptiles feel at home. Whether it's beautifully designed terrariums for housing your animals, feeding and nutrition, products that nourish your pets and help them find their food easier, substrates and habitat decor that allow you to create the most beautiful naturalistic looking homes for your animals, heating, lighting, and more. Exoterra has a wide selection of innovative products that allow hobbyists to successfully keep their reptiles. Exoterra makes it possible to cater to almost any species from almost any specialized habitat. Thank you again to my friends at Exoterra for sponsoring the expedition of a lifetime. Let's go herping! After nearly 10 hours of travel, we finally arrived in Andasibe National Park. Despite how hungry we were, we put off dinner because prime herping time is shortly after dusk. I've never been ready for anything more in my entire life. And uh, so right now we're gonna find sleeping lemurs getting eaten by giant spiders. Can you give me lots of bug spray? Yeah. I would love some to have some. Thank you, sir. Alright guys, we're not even a minute into our night hike here in Andesibe and we've already stumbled across a female Kaluma brevicorn. We were lucky enough to come across a male along a road a few days ago, so it's nice to see what the female animal here looks like. I guess we should be kind of quiet because she's sleeping. I'm very excited to see what we're going to come across tonight on the hike. Let's go. everybody this is probably one of my favorite target species that we were hoping to find here in Madagascar we're moving through the forest again it's not been very long just yet and one of our guides happened to spot this gorgeous male Europlatus sicore the mossy leaf-tailed gecko up in the vines near this tree Dave was able to gently coax the animal to come forward with a large branch where he leapt out and I was able to catch him which was a Pretty cool Whoa, experience. Nicely done. <laughs> Why wasn't anybody filming that? So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this species. They're from the Fimbriatus group or complex of the Europlatus, which includes the Giganteus, uh, the Sicore, the Samedi, the Henkeli, 
uh, and a few other species. And these guys are known for Nail their ability cars. to yep. essentially mimic or camouflage on trees, where we have the more cryptic uh, Ebenawi group that contains the Finiavanas, the Fantasticus Ebenawi, Fiera, and a few others that are mimicking dead leaves that are hanging from branches and such. These guys are more inclined to perch on trees during the day and sleep and hug them. And using that dermal flap that you can see along the whole dorsal part of their body, horizontally along the belly there, as well as this beard that you can see is kind of hugging my finger, they sort of ensure that there's no gap between themselves and the surface they're resting on, which makes them virtually impossible to see. If you find one of these guys during the day, wow oh man, you are, you have a sharp eye because they're very hard to find. We were saying that this is a male. You can see that he has a hemipenal bulge there at the base of the tail below the cloaca, but it's not very large because this guy's actually a juvenile. He still has about an inch or so, maybe more to grow before he's an adult. A nice good size. Now, Sikori and Semedi are probably the most common leaf-tailed geckos you're gonna find in Madagascar that go by mossy leaf-tailed gecko. And the primary way of distinguishing the two species is by the color of their buccal membrane, which is the, I guess, flesh color in the back of the throat behind the tongue. For the Sikori, it's black, and for the Semedi, it's pink. And we can pretty easily make the animal open their mouth by gently restraining them and sort of just rubbing the sides of their cheeks or at the back of their mouth. And it usually makes the animal open their mouth a little bit. And he's gonna do it. Yes. Okay, it's okay. Get above Naeem. Did you get any of the black? I did, I did. Okay, that's good enough. But yeah, we've established this animal is a Sikori. So, yeah, it's just so cool to be able to find these animals. I used to keep them, I've produced them, and a few good friends of mine, such as Matt Fischia, has produced quite a few of these as well. So this is like a full circle experience. It's so incredible to be here on the island finding these animals in the wild. Again, it's a very emotional and special blessing. Hopefully we'll find more of them, maybe even a female to show you the difference in the patterning. Where we are standing now is 90% humidity or 89 technically, and about 20 degrees or 69.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Take a look at the animal's habitat. We found it up in those branches there. It's still so hard to believe that we actually found this gecko. What a dream come true. All right, everybody, Nadim just noticed these beauties. Holy camoli, look at these stick insects. These are phasmids, and as you can see, they mimic sticks. So these ones would be considered stick bugs. The male here is over top of the female, and her abdomen is swole with eggs. You can see it's quite swollen. They're probably possibly hundreds of eggs in her abdomen. And once he's finished fertilizing them, she'll continue on her way and he will too. And she'll just feed upside down on the vegetation here in the forest of Andesibe that we're herping in right now and deposit eggs and they'll fall onto the forest floor, incubate over time. The phasmid crawls out and just sprints up into the nearest tree. So cool. Oh my god, did you see that? That's so crazy. Alright, Diane's getting her down here. Oh, look at that. Oh, she's on my. Oh, her spidey senses yeah. are tingling. Wow, that's so. a shabby you grabbed that. Female Sikori. Alright, so the other one that we just found was a male. This one is a female. This one is a little bit more mossy camel colored. This is so weird, man. Normally it's working with these in your reptile room, and now we're just finding them in the wild. I know. I've waited a long time to get here to see these in the wild. Okay everybody, so Adam, Nadim and I were making our way up the trail, a few stairs to catch up to the rest of the group. And Mike hollered over that he found this adorable female Europlatus sequoia. We brought her down from the tree. And we're going to have a closer look to show you some of those differences between the male and female animals more closely. So again, you saw that male and you could recognize that there's more of a tree trunk style pattern and texture to a skin. The females lack that. So you can see she's going more for that lichen-y, mossy blotching and doesn't have those distinct vertical or 
straight lines that move from the nose all the way down to the tail, the striping that looks like a tree trunk or bark that the male has. Lovely little juvenile. I suspect she's around four months old, maybe a bit younger. What a treat. So glad Mike spotted her. As the rain started to pick up, we had to make some pretty tough calls about whether to keep going further into the forest or head back. We have some pretty expensive equipment with us and it's no joke if it gets wet. All right, everybody, take a look at this beauty Mike found. I'm gonna tell you right now, he is killing it tonight. He found a rain frog, a female sakura, and I looked right past this beauty. This is a Physalixella. <laughs> this is a Physalixella arctifaciatus. A beautiful species of snake. I mean, look at the orange coloration. This animal is clearly arboreal in nature. It's been able to hold up the majority of itself up in the air, simply holding on to a branch with maybe a fourth of its body. It's so strong for its size. It's slender, it's mimicking vines. As you can imagine, it's been moving through this jungle probably hunting the lizards and frogs that we've come across on this very rainy night. She has this beautiful black band right below her head as you can see there. And her facial or head structures really reminds me of a Madagascar cat eye snake. But wow, look at this animal. She is gorgeous. Christopher. Oh, there it is. At this point, the rain had really started to pick up and we had to turn back and head to the bus. Funny enough, we actually spotted a few animals we had missed on the way in, so that was a special treat. Oh, hold on. I didn't see the other ones. Yeah. After a successful night herping excursion, it's time to head back to base and eat dinner. Tomorrow is an exciting day, but you're gonna have to wait till the next video to see exactly why. Or check out the sneak peek coming up. Found some more stuff. John, what'd you find? Huge moth. Some kind of really cool looking moth. With like blue on it. Thanks so much for watching everybody. See you next time.